Chris, what is our third main topic today? This comes from Paul H. Hi. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Ben Affleck will direct and co-star with Matt Damon in a movie about Nike trying to sign Michael Jordan to a shoe deal in the 80s. The last movie Ben directed was the 2016 movie Live, uh, Live by Night. Do you think this project will happen? All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in. And yeah, look, I, I say this all the time. I will continue to say it. Ben Affleck is one of the best directors today. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. And I didn't even think Live, Live by Night is his worst film that he directed. But I, I thought it was still pretty damn good. It's really good. I, yeah, I, and I, it's beautifully made. It's beautifully made, beautifully done. But I still think it's his worst film because when you look at his other movies, including one that won Best Picture at the Academy Awards, he is a phenomenal director. Yep. The Directors Guild of America honored him as Director of the Year, the year he did Argo. And he made some wonderful, fantastic films other than that. The dude, for, in my opinion, is four for four. But, you know, a lot of personal problems i think he had some bumps due to live by night he stepped away and he hasn't directed in years couple that with the fact that on a recent episode of winning time which my god if you're not watching mm -hmm. winning time watch it i don't care what jerry west says watch winning <laughs> time <laughs> DJ yeah, Pisha, so I know. What was and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was coming out saying jerry west is not being well served by yeah, this oh, well, I'll, I'll tell you this i'll tell you this I have never thought more highly of Jerry West Same. than from Winning Time. Same. I love Jerry West in oh, Winning Time. Oh, he's like time. the best. He's I mean. the man. Are you kidding me? Oh, and I'm God. like hearing Jerry West complain about this. Like, why are you complaining? Like, you I'm look watching. Awesome I'm in this. watching Winning Time. I want to be Jerry. I want to hang out with Jerry West. I do I mean, too. Oh my God, Jerry, be quiet. Let them make you look like the man. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> but in a recent episode of Winning Time, um, they had a they recreated a situation where Knight, the, the founder of Nike, Phil Knight, approached Irvin Magic Johnson with the possibility of a shoe deal. Now, Reebok was offering him, I think, $70,000 at the time. He ended up with a $100,000 deal. Nike said, From okay. Converse. You know, a Converse, you're right. Thank you. What did I say? Reebok, but okay, he, he right. was it was getting Converse. offers from Reebok and Adidas. Yep. and You were right. It was Converse. So... <laughs> And the guy was tremendously set up. He was offering him as much, much smaller amount of money, but one dollar per shoe that one dollar per shoe that they sell, and was a hundred thousand shares. So yeah, hundred thousand shares in the company. And Irvin's like, "What are the shares worth? Eighteen cents right now." So he turns it down. He goes shine, signs the deal with Converse, and the president of Converse says to him, "You won't regret this." Then it cups back tonight, going. Yes, he will. And then it brought up the math that today, those 100,000 stocks he would have had in Nike would have been worth $5.2 billion today. Plus whatever he sold, like $1 per shoe that he would have sold. So that story combined with, you know, the Ben Affleck angle, I found this fascinating that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are getting together again to write together and star in, and Ben Affleck will direct a movie about Nike signing Michael Jordan to his shoe deal, which is the most iconic sports celebrity endorsement of all time. This comes to us from The Hollywood Reporter, who writes the following. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are reuniting once again, this time for the true life story of former Nike executive Sonny Vaccaro in a feature project that will hail from Amazon Studios and Skydance Sports, who are in the process of finalizing their deal. Affleck will direct write and co-star and produce the untitled sports marketing drama while matt damon will star and also write and produce mandalay pictures the banner run by peter gruber and jason michael burnham will produce as well damon will portray vaccaro while affleck plays <coughs> nike co-founder phil knight in a story around nike's long shot efforts to sign the rising superstar basketball player michael jordan to its shoe company in the mid 80s an endorsement that seemed impossible at the time but thanks to the Maverick sneaker salesman would become the most significant relationship between an athletic brand and an athlete. Once again, this comes to us from the Hollywood reporter. Hell yes. <laughs> Sign me up. This sounds great. I don't think, I don't think it's been since goodwill hunting that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck have written and will star in together. And on top of that, Ben Affleck directing this based on this story, which of course the Nike, the Air Jordan line and the whole Nike thing, I, Ray and I have a buddy 
named Matt. You guys might remember Matt. Matt was also my co-host on uh, an iteration of my show years ago called For Your Consideration. Matt's awesome. Matt, I believe, has an entire room of his house dedicated to shoes. And they're all like Nikes, like different versions of Nikes. Whenever Ann and Ray and whenever they all get together and our buddy Ryan, they're always talking about, oh, which which model just came out? Yeah, what's what's they taking pre-orders for? What's the dollar value on that now? It's like a little stock market. I don't follow it. I don't know. But some of these shoes are worth ridiculous amounts of money. That being said, that all got started when Michael Jordan signed his deal with the guys over at Nike Ben Affleck directing it, him and Matt Damon writing this. Are you effing kidding me? This sounds amazing. Hey guys, we want to take a minute and thank the sponsor of today's video, the good folks at Keeps. Now look, you guys probably already know that two out of every three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're just 35 years old. Now that's where Keeps comes in because Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. That means the guys that use it love it. Keeps offers a simple, affordable, and stress-free way to keep your hair. It's also low cost. Treatments start as low as just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions for the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. That means treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. Keeps has everything your hair needs delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. Remember, prevention is the key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so the sooner you act, the better. When it comes to your hair, save more, spend less with Keeps. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Campia to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Campia to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Campia. And Rob, you hear this story. What stands out most to you about it and what do you think overall? Dude, I never thought that a movie about sneakers other than the movie Sneakers, mm -hmm. uh, with a great cast, would be exciting to me. This, uh, if it's as wildly entertaining as Winning Time is, I will watch this. But I think it's going to be really... Look, I love stories about maverick business people. Like The Founder, you know, when Michael Keaton, the founder of the movie about McDonald's. Uh, or like uh, Tucker, A Man in His Dream, with with uh, about the Tucker car. I love stories like this, and to have Ben Affleck. By the way, Ben Affleck and Matt uh, Matt Damon also wrote The Last Duel together, yes, which did. is a much yes, better movie than people than it, than it it did at the box office. You should check it out; it's pretty good. They got their marketing tips from Netflix, though. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I think this looks great. I mean, uh, this is. A, I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad that this kind of a movie is getting made because we need more movies like this not that i don't love superhero films and franchise ips and all that but i do like these kinds of stories and i'm glad it's getting made aaron you hear about uh, this story the michael jordan angle the affleck directing angle damon and affleck writing together I, I mean what stands out most to you about this and does this sound interesting to you well you know what i have to say kudos to winning time because i don't know if it would have been as interesting to me prior to me seeing that episode yeah. specifically. And um, I, the, the actor's name who plays that role is Ali Huskivi. And he was so good in, I mean, it's such a small role, but as that Phil is- Knight? As Phil Knight. It's right. a, I mean, really in the, in the bulk of this, in the entirety of the series, it really is such a small role, but talk about an actor just coming in and owning it. And you just know, just based on his confidence, the way that he portrayed that he's, you know, following him through the lobby and being like, Hey, we have this little shoe company that we're starting. And you know, this is an example and shows magic's name on the back of the shoe. And you see, Oh my God, what this could be. And you're like, just take it, just take it, just do that deal. Um, and he, I thought he did a beautiful performance with what was on paper. There wasn't a lot there. He really brought a lot to it and really made that whole story come alive in a way that uh, maybe an, a lesser actor might not have. So I want to definitely give a shout out for his performance. But yeah, I, I think that there's something, there's also a new um, Magic Johnson documentary that's coming out on Apple Plus now. Yeah. I feel like there's a big, uh, we're going to see a lot more basketball stories because there's some legendary stories. And now that so many of the legends are at an age where 
you know, it's time for their legacy to really be told to a younger generation. I think we're going to see some really in, some really cool stories coming out. And uh, Michael Jordan certainly is one of those epic, legendary people. So this is just the first part, I think, of the more of the more detailed Michael Jordan story we're going to see. Chris, do you like this story? Are you looking forward to this? What stands out to you about this? I mean, not really. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I'm not. Fair. I'm not a sports person, and the only time I've cared about a shoe storyline in something is when Carl Bentley and Alan Parrish talked about sneakers in Jumanji. That's basically it for me. <laughs> that being said, I do think there's a lot of promise here with these guys at the helm. I love when these two work together. I love their writing. I'm such a huge diehard Goodwill Hunting fan. I think it's so wonderful. I think their relationship in Dogma is so overlooked and underappreciated. I just love when they get to work together. So I, I think this could be something that I could get interested in. I just got to say again, probably my favorite moment that happened in winning time so far. I mentioned it the other day, but the last episode, they finally brought in Larry Bird. <laughs> oh my God. You're so good. I don't know who that is. I haven't even looked it up, but that whoever's playing Larry Bird is so good because like no basketball player in history has more iconic stories about them than Larry Bird. Like you got to hear Charles Barkley and Dominique Wilkins and even Shaquille O'Neal and Michael Jordan telling stories about Larry Bird. And the dude is a legit OG, but just the way they did it, it's so. I mean, he's country. Oh yeah, like I think I'm from the sticks. (laughs) No, he country. But Adam McKay gets him (laughs) country. Gets him so well because he first comes on screen. It's from behind. He's got his little spit can. Then you see his face and the fr- frame freezes. And you hear that, you know, like rock hitting rock sound. That boom, boom. As the words come up on screen. Boom, boom. You know my fucking name. And it's just they didn't even have to say Larry Bird. It's just like, and I just started killing myself laughing. It was so good. Anyway, guys, question is for you. I love this story. What do you think about it? Matt Damon, Ben Affleck getting together to tell the story about how Michael Jordan signed on with Nike and really changed forever the sports business relationship, the most iconic sports celebrity uh, endorsement ever of all time. What do you guys think about the story? Whatever your thoughts are, jump on down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts 